and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on what exactly is cytokine storm. The severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus that is the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic has reminded us of the critical role of an effective host immune response and what happens when the immune system is dysregulated. It can have devastating consequences. 27 years since this term cytokine storm was first used in literature to describe the engraftment syndrome of acute graft versus host disease after allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation the term has been used so oftenly that it has almost become synonymous with SARS-CoV-2. From a historical perspective Cytokine storm was previously referred to as an influenza-like syndrome that occurred after systemic infections such as sepsis or after immunotherapies like cholestoxin. An exaggerated immune response was suspected to contribute to the lethality of the influenza pandemic of the 1918s as well as the plague pandemics. Now let's see what are the clinical features and laboratory abnormalities. Cytokine storm is an umbrella term encompassing several disorders of immune dysregulation characterized by constitutional symptoms, systemic inflammation and multi-organ dysfunction that can lead to multi-organ failure if treated inadequately. A complete workup for infection as well as lab assessment for kidney and renal function should be performed in all suspected cases of cytokine storm. Now, if we look at what are the features, it has constitutional symptoms like fever, anorexia, fatigue. Apart from that, it can have specific symptoms, especially in lungs, from pneumonitis to ARDS, as we are seeing in COVID-19. In liver, there can be hepatomegaly, elevated liver enzymes, leading up to failure. Kidney can have acute renal injury or failure. In nervous system, we can have features from confusion, delirium to seizures. In heart, there can be cardiomyopathy, hypertension. Rheumatological, we can have vasculitis, arthritis, GI symptoms from nausea to ascites to diarrhea. In skin, we can have rashes and edema. Finally, in the vascular and the lymphatic system, which is very important, you can have cytopenias, anemias, leukocytosis, coagulopathies, and more importantly, the things that we are seeing right now in COVID-19, that is hyperferritinemia, acute phase increase like CRP increase, elevated cytokines like IL-1, IL-6, endothelial damage and vascular permeability problems. So these are the symptoms of cytokine storm. Now the cytokine storm is not a diagnosis of exclusion. It can encompass many disorders. For example, a patient of sepsis can have cytokine storm as well. However, it is important to distinguish cytokine storm from iatrogenic causes and infections because the treatment can be very different. The level of serum cytokines, most predominantly interleukin gamma, are often elevated in cytokine storm in iatrogenic causes like CART cell therapies. Then in patients who are having sepsis, in whom rather than interleukin gamma, it is the interleukin 1 beta procalcitonin which are elevated and markers of endothelial damage. Now let's see what are the pathophysiological features of cytokine storm. Now inflammation involves a set of biological mechanisms that have evolved in multicellular organisms to contain invasive pathogens and to resolve injuries by activating innate and adaptive immune responses. However, if this becomes deranged at very high levels, cytokines can have systemic effects as well and can cause collateral damage to the vital organ systems. Immune hyperactivation in cytokine storm can occur as a result of inappropriate triggering or danger sensing. So there can be five things that can happen. That is a response is initiated in absence of a pathogen like a Castleman's disease or there is an inappropriate or ineffective amplitude of response to a effector immune cell like a CAR T cell therapy or there can be overwhelming pathogen burden or uncontrolled infection like we see in sepsis there can be a prolonged immune activation like HLH associated with 
Epstein Barr virus, or there can be failure to resolve the immune response and return to hemostasis, like a primary HLH. So these are the possible pathophysiological mechanisms which lead ultimately into a cytokine storm. In cytokine storm, the most important cell line that is affected is the T cell line. So it is these cell lines which are getting affected and getting prolonged, excited, resulting in release of these cytokines, which ultimately result in recruitment of these cells and uh, amplification of the inflammatory response resulting in organ damage. Now, till now we do not have a proper definition of cytokine storm. This particular attempt is to try to find a definition which can be used systematically and uniformly in all cases of cytokine storms. So following are said to be the three criteria which we can and should find to label a case of having cytokine storm. The first is the elevated circulating cytokine levels, acute systemic inflammatory symptoms and finally secondary organ damage which can be over and above the normal response to a pathogen or it can be entirely cytokine driven in the absence of a pathogen. Apart from that, there can be response to specific anti-inflammatory agent which could add to the establishment of the fact that there was a cytokine storm. Though the response to treatment is not necessarily something which has to be present for labeling a case as cytokine storm. Now, regarding the levels of cytokine levels which can be uh, for diagnosing, these circulating cytokines can be very difficult to measure and they have a very short half-life and they may not be accurately reflecting their action at the local level. So the measurements also cannot be done worldwide. These are very specific tests, not something which is done routinely around the world. So as of now, there is no specific panel of cytokines which need to be measured or any specific cutoff to make a diagnosis of cytokine storm. Now let's look into the different types of cytokine storm. The first is the iatrogenic. This is usually seen in CAR T cell therapy where it is used to eliminate the CD19 lymphocyte cells but it can induce a cytokine storm by increasing the levels of interleukin gamma and IL-6. In this the severity is produced not by the CART cells but by the macrophages which cause increase in the IL-6 levels so, and it can be reversed by blocking IL-6 and IL-1. Steroids can also be used. Apart from that, cytokine storm can also be observed in other T cell engaging immunopathies as well. So in immunotherapies which are targeting T cells or are T cell based, they are prone to developing cytokine storms. Now pathogen induced cytokine storm. This is something which we see very common. It is but distinguishing an appropriate cytokine production from controlling a widespread infection and when it actually turns over into an excessive cytokine production is challenging to know and it is very difficult to know with an ongoing infection. Now staph super antigen is something which has been known to produce these type of effects. Apart from that. HHV8 which is associated with Castleman disease and increases the IL-6 levels on its own is also associated with cytokine storms. Apart from that, sepsis is the most common cause which we see every day almost and disseminated viral infection are also known to produce profound cytokine effects. So this is mainly by the effect of the antigen presenting dendritic cells. In presence of defective perforin mediated cytolysis, there is persistent stimulation of these lymphocytes by the dendritic cells and there is poor clearance of these dendritic cells. So there is extensive proliferation of T cells and macrophages and this autocrine loop actually results in a cytokine storm. Now monogenic or autoimmune cytokine storm. It is seen in primary HLH or in multicentric idiopathic Castleman disease where there is a increase in level of IL-6 in spite of no pathogen or anything being present. Now coming to the most common cause of cytokine storm nowadays that is COVID-19. Now it has very heterogeneous symptoms resulting from even mild fatigue to life-threatening ARDS 
and multi organ failure. Serum cytokine levels that have been found to be elevated in COVID-19 are interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, IP10, tissue necrotic factor, interleukin gamma, macrophage inflammatory protein, 1 alpha and 1 beta, and vascular endothelial growth factors. Now, host immune response and immune-related symptoms are extremely variable between asymptomatic patients and patients with severe COVID-19 pneumonia, which suggests that the host immune dysregulation contributes significantly to the pathology of COVID-19. Now, what are the therapies available or how we can target the treatment for cytokine storm? The most important still remains supportive care for the multi-organ failure. So, it is essential that we support the organ failure first before we try to attempt other things. The second is control of the underlying disease. Again, very important. Without controlling the source of sepsis or the triggering agent, it is almost impossible to cure these type of diseases just by blocking the immunological agents. The third is elimination of any specific trigger which is causing the abnormal immune response. And last but not the least is the targeted immunomodulation therapy to limit the collateral damage. So the treatment for cytokine storm is fourfold rather than just one fold targeting only the immunomodulation therapy. So our treatment plan should encompass all these four rather than focusing only on these immunomodulation and immunosuppression therapies. So to summarize, co the cytokine storm is mainly in presence of a potential trigger or initiator. This can be as we have seen atrogenic, pathogens or monogenic and also cancers can produce. So they predominantly act on these adaptive T cells which are the center for cytokine storm and though this is something which happens normally. So in some patients there is this absence of negative regulators. These are still not known. They can be the interleukin 10, decoy cytokine receptors, mesenthelial stem cells and there can be a immune hyperactivity because of the immune response that is inappropriate triggering, inappropriate amplitude of response, failure to resolve inflammation, all these things result in what is called as a cytokine storm. It results in release of various cytokines and our treatment can target any of these and can see whether it reduces. For example, the most common one that is being used right now is tocilizumab, which is a IL-6 receptor antagonist. Apart from that, siluctuzumab, which is a direct interleukin-6 inhibitor or anakinra, all these things can be used to reduce the cytokine storm. Now, up, as it prolongs, there is a prolonged activation of signaling pathways that is MAPK, NF kappa beta, JAK stat, mTOR. So now we have specific inhibitors for these places like JAK inhibitors have been used like baricitinib, tofacitinib, and mTOR inhibitor like sirolimus have been used, and obviously the most commonly used is the glucocorticoid. So when there is no such checks into the cytokine storm, what can result is an acute systemic inflammatory effect and secondary organ failure, which finally leads to a multi-organ failure and death. So our treatment modality is organ support, immunomodulatory agents and treatment of the cause. Thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.